At the time of writing this story, Harry Belafonte has been dead for a little over a week. He died on April 25th, 2023. On the day that he died, I released a video about some little-known facts about him. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box. I noticed that a lot of the comments on that video were things like, too bad Harry only liked white women, or I can't feel sorry for him because of how he treated black women, and I get it. And that appears to be true. Many of you made comments about what he told Eartha Kitt. For those who don't know, Eartha Kitt talked about being criticized for dating white men in Hollywood. In response to that criticism, she said that the black men in Hollywood didn't want her or any of the other black women in Hollywood, it seems. She called out Harry Belafonte specifically, saying that he told her that he didn't want to be with a black woman because there was nothing that a black woman could do for him to help to further his career. And just to be clear, I don't have a problem with anyone's dating and mating choices. None of us should. If people choose to date and marry outside of their race, that's fine. If people choose to date and marry within their race, that's fine too. The problem is using the person who you don't want as a placeholder until you find the person who you do want. And using the person who you say you want for the purpose of advancing your career. So on this channel, two things can be true at one time. We can acknowledge the wonderful achievements that someone made, as well as talk about their not-so-wonderful actions. On that point, I also received this comment on my Facts About Harry video. Oh well, that one wasn't so bad. I was preparing for a chopping block story where he gets stomped to death by Ty. Well, there's never a need for me to stomp a man to death. Especially this one, he was already dead. But when we're doing what we do here, it is covering the hot mess, the scandals. So... But that's one thing, you see. For the man. We never, ever do nothing nice but and easy. Never lost one <laughs> we always do it nice it and rough. That's right, Tina. In case you're not familiar with the phrase, come up woman, that is the wife men have because they are accessible. A guy will stay with this woman until he can get on his feet and have the confidence and the money that he needs to approach the woman he really wants. So today, we're going to talk about how Harry Belafonte used his black wife as the come-up woman and never looked back. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous people from yesteryear, who make Ty's Hot Miss History a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And hit that like button to support this video. Thank you. Now, on to why you are here. Harry Belafonte's first wife was Frances Marguerite Bird. She was born into a family of high achievers and she had plans to keep up with her relatives. When she met Harry, he was in the Navy, and she was attending college at the Hampton Institute, studying psychology. Her ultimate professional goal was to be a child psychologist. When Harry met her, he knew that he wanted to marry her, but he was intimidated by the fact that her family was so accomplished. Harry's father left his mother for a white woman when Harry was rather young, and not having his father's income left their family in poverty living in cheap apartments in bad neighborhoods. Well, Marguerite's family lived in a house. That alone made him feel like he wasn't good enough for her, and getting her to say yes to marrying him would be an uphill battle. Even though Harry was in the Navy, he was attending a program for the Navy that was held at Marguerite's school. And there was a rule that sailors were not allowed to date students. Harry seemed to be really into Marguerite, so much so that he broke that rule and managed to get a date with her. They danced on that date, and he told her that night that he just might marry her. He learned that night that she was dating someone else, and the two became friends. But he still persisted because, after all, it's not like she was married. Sometime after that dance, she saw him act in a play, and she hugged him after the show. They went on a walk that night after the play, and he took his chance and proposed to her. She accepted and they set a date, June 18, 1948. 
She didn't tell her parents until the night before and they were not pleased. Nevertheless, Marguerite Bird showed up to City Hall and Marguerite Belafonte left City Hall. Since her parents disapproved, they did not attend. So one of Marguerite's aunts and a co-worker from her job at a nursery showed up to be witnesses. Harry took Marguerite to Beaver Lodge in Pennsylvania for their honeymoon. I know that sounds very romantic, but it was likely just a decision of convenience and practicality for Harry because he worked there as a part of their entertainment staff. So yes, he took her to work for their honeymoon. Immediately after it was over, Marguerite went back to work in Manhattan. Their marriage was a struggle from day one. While pursuing her PhD, she was also working, making a steady $80 per week. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $1,000 per week today in 2023. But Harry didn't have a stable income. He was a struggling actor. Well, the only thing that can improve a marriage that's already in struggle mode is a baby. That's sarcasm. But two months after the wedding, the couple found out that they had a baby on the way. After they welcomed their little bundle of joy, Adrienne and Michelle, in 1949, the marriage continued to deteriorate, and then Harry met actress Julie Robinson. And that was the beginning of the end. In 1954, Marguerite gave birth to their second daughter, Sherry. Then she found letters that Julie Robinson had written to Harry. So she filed for divorce, and the news hit the papers. She was reported as being a child psychologist and model who was fed up with her husband. And she had been, quote, lonely with Harry away all the time, end quote. Well, Harry went on to marry Julie Robinson before the ink was dry on his divorce decree. The divorce was finalized, uncontested, on February 28, 1957. Harry Belafonte was charged with committing extreme cruelty against his wife. Again, the charges were uncontested, so he agreed with what his wife said happened to her. So again, the divorce was finalized on February 28th, and Harry married Julie Robinson on March 8th, the same year, just one week and one day after his divorce was finalized. Oh well. A 1975 issue of Jet Magazine featured a very happy and healthy-sounding Marguerite in an article called, Our Second Marriage is Better. At this time, she was married to a doctor after having taken 10 years to be single after her divorce. She reflected on what she could have done differently, meaning that she should have noticed that Harry wasn't going to be the right guy for her. They had different goals and she couldn't change him. And in her mind, and I believe that it's true, no one should try to change the person who they're with. People are either incompatible or compatible. But as for the question that was the title of the article, Our Second Marriage is Better? Hers certainly was. The article had pictures of her and Harry in the past, Harry and his new family, but most importantly for Marguerite, her and her new husband, Dr. Edward Mazik. They remained married until death parted them. I can't express enough that my previous video about Harry Belafonte was just what I said it was, facts about him. I don't see him as a man who deserves praise, but I don't think that any human deserves praise. He was a great actor who seemed to be a horrible husband. My next video about Harry will explore the affair that another celebrity wrote about having with him after he married his second wife, who was mentioned in this video. Harry Belafonte is often celebrated as a fierce civil rights activist, but I even question his motives regarding that. I question the motives of a lot of people who were involved in that movement. That is a topic that I explored in this video about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Harry's good friend. You can see that video here. I will also leave a link to it in the description box. My sources for this story are the Des Moines Register Archives, 1957, Los Angeles Times Archives, 1957, Ebony Magazine Archives, 1975, and Tiki Dokubu on Amomama.
This video has been brought to you by me. Well, my Patreon is a sponsor for this video. If you like these dirty scandals on my channel, then you'll love my Patreon, Ties Too Hot, Hot Mess History. It has all of the stuff that I can't talk about or show here because it's just too hot, too violent, too sexual, too graphic, too much. Come and join us there for the hot, hot mess history. The link is in the description box. Are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator, but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way. Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn, and in it, she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022. Because let's face it, social media is a moving target, and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms, and she literally has the credentials to back it all up as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business, the business of blogging.